Are people going to lose muscle mass if they go into ketosis and they lower insulin? Oh, that's a great question. I'm, I'm happy to answer it because of for I can rely on some good research. Two thoughts come to mind. One was the Scottish man, I think, um, who fasted for 384 days right, right. and then worked from my own lab. So let me start with the Scottish guy. This is a documented case report where he literally fasted for more than a year. And Dave, something I actually thought about earlier when you were describing kind of your own feeling and then the cortisol, it's, it's for people to understand the difference between a fast and starvation. Yes. The difference between those two is fat tissue. If you have fat tissue to burn, that means you're making ketones, which means you're feeding the brain everything it could ever want. As you start to run out of fat, now you run out of ketones. Now the brain has to rely on glucose. And what's the main source of glucose? It's going to be amino acids in that state, not in the normal state. In the normal state, it's most of the source of, amino of glucose is coming from lactate, by the way. But when with long-term fasting to the point of I've run out of fat tissue, now the body starts breaking down muscle to get those amino acids to convert those into glucose and cortisol helps it happen. Now, in this guy, he had so much fat because he was morbidly obese, he didn't lose muscle. He maintained his muscle mass throughout this wow. entire fast. Now, in my lab, we published a report finding, in fact, it was right after we did the fat cell study where we looked at how fat cells um, respond to ketones by increasing the metabolic rate. And there's a lot of wasting of energy. We did a comparable study, not quite as strong, we didn't use humans, but we did a comparable study with muscle tissue and ketones. And we found that ketones enhance mitochondrial coupling of the muscle. So the muscle's getting more efficient with its use of energy. And it, they, the muscle cells were, were more robust as we kind of insulted the muscle cells with some chemical stimuli to kind of knock on them and hurt them a little bit. When muscle cells were fueled with ketones, they were more rigorous. They were tougher. They were more viable and more resistant to injury, suggesting that at the end of it all, people have long said that ketones defend muscle. Now, what they meant by that was that if ketones are up, then there's going to be less breakdown of muscle because we don't need those amino acids for gluconeogenesis, which is true. But my lab added evidence to this, which is to say that ketones really are defending the muscle because when muscles are fueled with ketones, they're literally tougher. They're harder to kill. When I stayed in ketosis for long periods of time, uh, that I would develop insulin resistance. This seems like oh, a, oh. a common occurrence. So, so that's one of yeah, the reasons yeah. I recommend cycling. Uh, yeah. So talk talk about insulin resistance and people in ketosis for a long period. Oh, I'm right. so glad you. I have a chance to bring this up. Yeah. So Dave, you'll um, you'll you'll not be upset for me to say that's not insulin resistance. Oh, cool. What people are describing in that case of a ketogenic diet causing insulin resistance, it's not insulin resistance. Insulin is working exceptionally well. What it is is an acute glucose intolerance. Now, let me, let me sort of provide some interesting context here. People have heard of the concept, concept of metabolic flexibility, yeah. which is this idea that when you eat a mixed macronutrient meal with carbs, you go to glucose burning mode and you can detect this. And then when you enter a fasted state about five to six hours later, because insulin's come down, you go to a fat burning state. So the body shifts between sugar burning and fat burning. Um, some scientists at the University of Pittsburgh years ago, 25 years ago now, I think, documented this concept of metabolic inflexibility, which is where there are, there are people who have insulin resistance, because that's the cause of this, that when they eat, they're in glucose sugar burning mode. When they're fasting, they're still in glucose and sugar burning mode because their insulin is still elevated, which is insulin resistance. So they're stuck in sugar burning mode. Now, in the long-term adherence to a ketogenic diet, I like to say you kind of have an inverse metabolic flexibility scenario where it's almost like the body is stuck in fat burning. Now, it's not. What has actually happened is if you've been in a long uh, a ketogenic diet, actually, it doesn't even take long. It's, it, it's as, even if a person fasts for 24 hours, okay. what I'm about to describe happens to them as well. So if someone goes and takes an oral glucose tolerance test, they go drink a bunch of glucose, you measure a glucose curve and you see it come up and down and it, say about two hours, it's 
back down to about 100 milligrams per deciliter. That's a good response. Now, if this person were to then adopt a, well, even fast for 24 hours, let alone be in a ketogenic diet, if they take that same oral glucose tolerance test, now you would say, wow, my glucose went higher and it took even longer to come down. It didn't come down until three hours or three and a half hours. The temptation is to say, I'm insulin resistant now. Because if you were looking at a person with type 2 diabetes, that is what's happened. But that's not what's happened in this person who maybe just fasted a little too long or is on a ketogenic diet. In that case, it's because of a lack of preformed insulin in their beta cells. So basically, when we eat carbs, the insulin, uh, the beta cells want to be ready. And they literally have a bunch of prepackaged insulin in the beta cells stored like on the shelves behind me, ready to go. Here I am in my beta cell office. Insulin, glucose comes up, I get a knock on the door. I know, okay, I gotta address the glucose. I'm gonna start shipping out all of this insulin I have made right now, which is called the first phase insulin release. But I am constantly monitoring the glucose. I know this isn't gonna be enough. And so at the same time I've been shipping out my preformed insulin, I've started making more insulin. That's the second phase insulin release. When a person has fasted too long, well, 24 hours or so, that's not too long, but prior to an oral glucose tolerance test, it is, or they're on a ketogenic diet, the beta cells are so efficient, and I'm sympathetic to this because I hate clutter, that the beta cells basically start to say, hey, I got all this stuff on my shelves here and I'm not using it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to get rid of it. And so it literally breaks the insulin down to its base amino acids and then just recycles them and does anything it wants with them. Wow. But it starts to think, I don't need all this insulin. And then all of a sudden, hold on, red alert, we need glucose has just flooded the system. Oh, crud, the, the beta cell says. Well, I don't have all the insulin made, so there goes that first phase insulin response that I'd normally have. But I still have the ability to make a bunch of insulin. It's just going to take me a little longer, so body pardon me, beta cell, for being too efficient, it's going to take us a little longer to clear that glucose. But, mm -hmm. says the beta cell, to finish off this weird story, if you do this again within a 20-hour period or so, I'm going to keep this insulin here just in case we do it again. So, my long-winded way of saying, it's, it's, it's that there has become an acute glucose intolerance because of a very temporary reduction in insulin on hand preformed. Uh, and so if a person is on a ketogenic diet or they're going in for an oral glucose tolerance test and they think that they're going to crush it by fasting for 24 hours, you've actually set the stage to get a false positive or you're going to fail that glucose tolerance test or get a worse score because you haven't eaten carbs recently. So eat some carbs eight hours or so before you go take the test. And, and it doesn't have to be sugar. Just eat some starches and then the beta cells will say, ah, okay, maybe we're going to start getting into carb consumption again. I'm going to hold on to some insulin so that when we do this test in 8 or 12 hours, I'm going to be ready for it. And then you'll pass it with flying colors because a ketogenic diet mm. will improve insulin sensitivity exceptionally well. Remember, Dave, wow. that everyone remember, the way I described insulin resistance earlier applies every time we invoke the term insulin resistance, which is insulin will be high. If insulin is low, it is not. It is impossible for the body to have insulin resistance. So this scenario isn't reflective of insulin resistance, but just rather a temporary state of glucose intolerance because the body's kind of been saying, well, I'm not sugar burning, I'm fat burning. Oh, hold on, wait, you want me to go back to sugar burning? All right, well, I wasn't quite prepared, so pardon me while I just sort of make wow. some adjustments and I'll be better prepared next time.